Hey folks, time for another Q&A on Earth's catastrophe cycle, more specifically, the one about to unfold in the next several years. Let's jump right into it. How does the nova make impactors? Well, a solar micronova is the blasting off of an accumulated shell that happens in the corona due to reduced luminescence, reduced solar wind, basically from the galactic magnetic reversals effect on our star, the sun. While there will be lots of UV and X-rays, lots of cosmic ray particles, there are also going to be larger agglomerations of all of this material into those impactors. You can't really have anything like a micronova without having those impactors. Same goes for a classical nova and a supernova for that matter. And really what this is getting at is the notion of what actually happened 12,000 years ago, 12,000 years before that, 12,000 years before that. Again, this cuts against the idea that it was just a comet. And it's not just the fact that a nova can make impactors. Therefore, the impactor theories are sort of superseded by this idea 12,000 years ago, specifically Graham Hancock's idea. It's that all the evidence we have seen, it can't be accounted for with impactors. Yes, you might get a, glo a, a localized volcanic eruption due to it, but we saw a global uptick in volcanoes. Yes, you could have local magnetic anomalies, but they would be very short-lived. We had a full long-term geomagnetic excursion, not to mention the Nova level isotopes. And for those who are going to say, but don't Randall and Graham say there were several events? It was actually three different events. No, there weren't. It was one event. We have these cosmic disasters spaced almost evenly apart, and yet we get three cosmic level disasters in what, 800 to 1,000 years? No, that's the isotopes messing with them. The isotope dating that is very, very wrong. We've gone over that several times. Um, and it's not just the carbon dating, uh, the chlorine, the oxygen dating. Um, strontium and krypton aren't bad, but this is where that mistake is coming in. It was one event. 12,000 years ago, and you have to account for all of this evidence just like you have to 12,000 years before that and 12,000 years before that. Keep getting this question, what happens if Betelgeuse goes Nova? Well, it'll be a pretty thing to see in the sky, but absolutely nothing. Absolutely nothing. It's too far away to have any meaningful effect on this planet whatsoever. Um, not to mention the fact it's not going supernova. It already had its micronova event. It was a dust production event. It was not a dimming of Betelgeuse. It puffed out a little mini micronova that actually blocked some of the light. That's what happened with the dimming of Betelgeuse. It's already had its event. And again, even if it did go supernova, absolutely nothing but a pretty light show in the sky. Uh, are we due for another mud flood? Well, Mud floods are absolutely real. They seem to happen a lot more often than these major events, but that is the case with several of the other major disasters we've seen. Heinrich uh, events are on the half cycle. Dansgaard Oschger events are on the quarter of the Heinrich event cycle. And I think somewhere there or even on a shorter period is where the mud floods come in. But remember, this is going to be much worse than a mud flood, than, than the last one anyway. That one wasn't a global disaster where everything got buried. Yes, there were examples of the disaster hitting various places in the world, but it wasn't something that absolutely took out everything in the world at that time. They are real, and what's going to happen next cycle is much worse. How many people are going to survive the disaster? I don't, I don't know if you guys think I look like Jesus or if I have a crystal ball or something, but uh, that one's really hard to say. You know, the one 70,000 years ago or so, very few people survived. Le Champ, not too many people survived. But people survive every single time. And given how many people there are right now and are spread all around the world, I would say in the low range, Millions will survive at the high range. Half a billion people could survive. And there's really no way of exactly knowing where that number is going to fall out. But definitely there are going to be people who survive. 
there will be people who survive in caves and other underground shelters. There will be people who are on the lucky side of earth, so to speak, uh, and it will not be as hard hit there. And there will be people who simply float away despite the continent-sized tsunamis. Hopefully, if that is you, you don't end up in the middle of the ocean. Basically, if you do find yourself, by the way, successfully floating away in the great cyclical deluge, in the massive tsunamis, the moment the water starts going the other direction, which means it's receding, get to land as fast as humanly possible. You do not want to end up in the middle of an ocean after this thing. Last question. Um, I feel like we've approached this from different angles before. Why are the elites spending trillions when it's very obvious they know what's happening? Why are they putting in this digital system? Why are they putting in 5G towers? Why are they doing this, that? Because they know, as I've told you many times, it won't be until the late 2030s to 2040s that this is going to happen. They still want to resource grab. They still want to have all of the control until that happens. And yes, there are a fair number of them who want depopulation. And this is a great way to do it without being so in your face that those who survive don't come looking for them afterwards. They're going to be subversive, um, divertive. They're not gonna make it super obvious uh, even though to many of us, things like uh, the electromagnetic frequencies and the thing they're sticking in our arms is a pretty obvious way to do it. Um, the, w those who can see that they're intentionally collapsing the global economy, yeah, seems pretty obvious. But you got to realize, people like us, we're a small minority. As long as the entire world doesn't get what they're doing, they think they can get away with it and they may be right. But so uh, that's why they're spending trillions. And they're not just spending trillions on things like that. They're spending it, um, you know, the money that disappears and they don't know, where the, no, uh, don't know where it went. They're spending it on their own preparations and their own hopes that they're going to be the ones who make it. Anyway, we'll see you guys in the morning for the Daily Show. Be safe, everyone.